All right, everyone, welcome to my office tour for 2022. This is my absolute dream office where I do everything from gaming to relaxing and creating content. So a few years ago, my wife and I, we bought this house and this has been a spare room that I've used on and off for a kind of workspace area. You may have seen some of my different desk setups on social media. And in fact, you may have seen some from this office when the walls were almost black. I've gone through a variety of different phases over the last couple of years in how I've wanted my workspace to be. Over Christmas last year, I actually went down into the basement completely renovated that and didn't like it. I felt that there was no natural light and I came back up here and 100% did a makeover of this space to make it into something where I can feel comfortable just relaxing, gaming and creating my photo and video content. So this space here has been a combination of about four years of different desks, different layouts and accumulating different items that I'll go over in this video. One thing that I wanna make clear about having a desk set up is that not everything happens overnight definitely takes a lot of patience and some monetary investment as well to gather all of these things to create something that works for you. So right here that you see in the frame is my main desk. I have two desks that I'll be covering in this video. One is where I spend a lot of my time for entertainment and relaxing. And then this desk right here is where I do all my work and content creation. To kick things off, the main desk is the Lag Captain tabletop from Ikea. Now this comes in a variety of different sizes. And I've used a lot of different Ikea tables over the last few years. Most of the time I used their kitchen countertop, the Salyan, which, which was 74 inches wide and I think about 25 inches deep. This time around, I went for a slightly different size with this Lag Captain, which is 63 inches wide and 31 inches deep. I thought I'd just change it up and get away from that standard desk depth. And I really like the 31 inch depth of this table. I feel like I have plenty of space, particularly when it's combined with a monitor stand and I have even more depth by being able to store things underneath as well. So this is something that I'm very happy with. I'm glad I went with a deeper desk. The desk itself is sitting on a pair of autonomous legs from FlexiSpot, but I just found that the standing option wasn't something that I'd use. I'm rather active anyway. So when I'm working, I'd much rather sit down and be more comfortable, which then allows me to be more dialed in and more focused. And because I'm more comfortable, I end up being a better, more productive creator. So this workstation itself is powered by the 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. I've done a lot of videos on this Mac over the last couple of weeks, and I won't go into too much detail about it because I feel I've talked about it a lot, but needless to say, this Mac is absolutely fantastic. It handles all of my content creating needs without even breaking a sweat. So it's the near base model. It has the 10 core processor and the 16 core GPU with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. I feel that this meets the demands of the work that I do. I have absolutely no complaints and I've definitely haven't pushed it to its limit. Thoroughly impressed with it and have zero complaints. When I'm working at this desk, I plug it into the ultra wide monitor that I have, which is the 35 inch ultra wide monitor by LG. To be precise, the model number is the 35WN75C-B. Um, I bought it locally for about $400 and I think it retails for about $500. I really have no complaints about this monitor. I've used a lot of LG monitors in the past and this one just kind of lives up to the expectations that I had already. I picked this up recently because it has a USB-C option where I can plug in my MacBook Pro to the monitor via USB-C. So it has 94 watt power delivery, which is enough for my 14 inch M1 Pro processor. And it also has data transfer as well. So there are two USB slots at the back of this monitor. And that's where I plug in my microphone, which is what I'm using right here. And then my external hard drive, which is where I store all of my video. But it's got 100 Hertz refresh rate. And it's a 2K resolution monitor. I don't know the exact specifications of the color accuracy, but I believe it's somewhere in the range of 99% sRGB. I know that's not the standard these days, but I'm never gonna come close to the quality of the Pro XDR display on the 14 inch Pro. So I'm not gonna fork out like over $1,500 for the best monitor out there. And it does enough for what I need. And I want it ultra wide because I love having all of that real estate, particularly when I'm editing video, because obviously it allows me to see my entire timeline without having to shift across. So that's why I went with this because it ticks all the boxes really for my needs. Also plugged into the back of the monitor is the Kingston workflow station. This just gives me extra ports, two more SD card slots, two micro SD card slots, one USB-A and then one USB-C. It just keeps things tidy. I just plug in my memory cards in there. Obviously the MacBook Pro has a memory card slot, but if I wanted to plug in more than one, you know, if I'm referencing different media or whatnot, then I can just have them all plugged in at the same time. So it keeps my desk tidy and I don't have to have extra cables lying around all over the place. 
I'm a huge fan of desk mats. This desk mat is my latest pickup. It's from ULX store. Really don't have anything bad to say about it. It's excellent quality and it helps protect the desk. Sitting on the desk mat is the Apple keyboard with Touch ID. And then for my mouse, I use the Logitech MX Master 3. I've used these for a very long time. I don't think I'll change them anytime soon. The bookshelf speakers are the Edifier R1280DB. They are Bluetooth speakers. I don't have them plugged into my MacBook. I just use them for Bluetooth when I want to listen to some music. I just connect my phone to them and then play the music that way. They're a really nice aesthetic. I like the kind of two-tone wood grain. It matches the desk shelf really nicely and the other wood accent pieces that I have on the desk. And the audio quality is really good for the price. I think they range about $140. I'm not really an audiophile myself, but I have ears and I like to listen to music and they sound pretty good to me. So I have no complaints there. My headphones of choice are the Sennheiser HD58X Jubilee. These are open back headphones and the quality of these are absolutely superb. The only time that I use these are when I'm referencing audio on these videos. So when I'm listening back to dialogue or getting the music levels right, etc., etc., I will listen to headphones because I don't like listening to speakers because I really want to listen to make sure that my levels are correct. And these headphones are really comfortable. They're open back so my ears don't get too hot when I'm listening over a long period of time. And they're around ear. So they don't sit on my ears and they don't go over my ears, but the ear cups are really large for my rather big ears. And they're really comfortable because they're not squashing my ears when I'm wearing them. And I can endure long editing sessions without having like a headache or anything like that. Final piece of kind of audio related equipment is this microphone right here. This is the Shure MV7 microphone. So it does have XLR support, but the reason I bought it is because it has USB support. I used to use the Rode VideoMic Pro, which I do use for my vlogs, but um, I'm kind of liking this setup. I've been testing it out for a while and I had done it in the past in some previous videos, but I'm kind of liking this. So I'll be using this for the most part from here on out. As for some accessories on the desk, I have a lot of GroveMade products and I really like GroveMade. They are an excellent company. It's all made in the US and a lot of it for the most part is handmade as well. Their products, however, are an investment but you're definitely getting what you're paying for and it's something that's going to last you a very long time. I have the GroveMade monitor shelf. This is the first edition one, so it has changed since I got this one, but it's excellent quality and it allows me to obviously have my monitor on the desk and then store things underneath if I need to. The iPhone stand is probably one of my favorite items that I have from GroveMade. So it works with the MagSafe charger for the iPhones that are compatible with that. It's at eye level, so if I get a notification, I can look at the screen and if it's important, then I can address it. And if it's not, I can ignore it. And it's definitely helped my productivity because whenever my phone would go off before, I would instantly grab it. But now it's kind of a little bit more hands-off and allows me to kind of stay focused at the task at hand. The next GroveMade item is my headphone stand. This is just something that I wanted to kind of complete the desk aesthetic. It's beautiful wood and I mean, it's a headphone stand. It doesn't do anything fancy. It just holds my headphones, but I wanted to get it, so I got it. <laughs> And then the other GroveMade piece, it's the bookshelf. GroveMade actually sent me this in exchange for some photos and a sponsored post that I did about two years ago. So I, I picked it because it matched the monitor stand really nicely. Once again, it's really solid build and I think it just kind of completes the whole aesthetic of this kind of wall space to the left of me. Now I'm sure you've seen the Alex drawers on people's desk setups, mainly because one, they look great. They're really good functionality for storage and they make excellent table legs. But the reason I got it is because it allows me to have an extra kind of tabletop, so to speak. I keep my camera gear there where everything's really accessible and it just complements the setup really nicely. For the most part, I keep things stored in these Wanda Tech pouches. I've done a video review on these a while back and I, it's overdue for a new one. So I will be coming out with a long-term review of these, but they are amazing. I use the Wanda backpacks and have nothing but good things to say about them. I think they are the best in the market and their tech pouches are no exception. So definitely check them out if you're interested as well. Let's talk about the wall behind my desk. So we have these lights from Gove. They are Bluetooth lights and they're fully addressable. So you can change the color to whichever you want. And I'm really pleased with how this turned out. I'm using these lights to frame the rest of the layout on the wall. In the center, I have two pegboards from Ikea with a variety of different items on there. And then on either side, framed by the two light bars, are two beautiful pieces of wall art from 2046 print store. I definitely recommend you go check them out if you're interested in space style wall art. Moving on to my second desk. So this is my gaming setup. So for the last year, I've tried to keep my gaming and work separate. It's a psychological thing and it's definitely helped me stay a lot more productive. The three big things in this area is the OLED Nintendo Switch, the PS5, and my custom built PC. 
The PC is the NZXT H1 case with a Ryzen 5 3600X processor, 16GB of RAM and a GTX 1060. This PC isn't going to break any records but it does exactly what I need. As for peripherals, I have the Keychron K2 keyboard, Razer Naga mouse and Razer Nari headset. The desk itself is the IKEA Liniment and I will be changing this for another Lag Captain in a slightly larger size in a dark grey colour. The shelves that I have in here are um, from Ikea as well. I think they're pronounced Fialbo, not 100% sure. Pretty much just where I hold my boxes and accent pieces to really just bring this room together. So on one, I have my favorite Lego piece, which is the Land Rover Defender. This was a two day build, very intensive, literally has all the working pieces. Off the beaten path is by one of my good friends, JK Winders, definitely check out his work. The first Tamron magazine where I was published in, I had to have this one out on display because it was a huge milestone in my own personal career as well. These are my favorite pair of Jordans in the pollen. The floor lamp is the Hectar lamp. I really like it because they're individual bulbs, so I can have one on or two on or all three if I want. And then the small lamp on the shelving unit is called the Tarnaby. And then with this final desk setup, I really wanted to make sure that I had some plants in here. I wanted to bring in some plants because psychologically, plants just make you happy in a workspace. Definitely recommend getting plants, but don't forget to water them. I myself set a timer. I did my research on how often these plants need to be watered. So I have a timer set to remind myself and I just water them on a regular basis. Okay, everyone, that is about it for my office tour. I hope you enjoyed it and that it's enlightened you and maybe given you some inspiration for your own office space pursuits. I definitely want to just reiterate that this did not come overnight. It was a lot of effort over a long period of time. So you just gotta be patient. It will come eventually and you will be able to be in a space that you feel happy creating with at your most productive self. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe, the like button and the bell notification so you know when the next video will be dropping. And as always, until next time, I'll see you later.